morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, I'm doing another one of those videos that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. We're going to be having a chat about the top 10 level X's that we have ever had. Level X's were around a while ago. They came around in the Diamond and Pearl base set, and they left us with the Arceus expansion. But for those sets, we had level X's, and many of them were pretty gosh darn good. So let's start off with a couple of honourable mentions, shall we? And one that I really loved was Dusk Noir Level X. Dusk Noir Level X was a very, very strange card indeed. When it got KO'd by damage from your opponent's attacks, you discarded all cards attached to it, and you put it into play as a stadium. It did count as Dusk Noir being knocked out. Your opponent took a prize. And then you put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon between turns. That was amazing! And then if any other stadium came into play, or it was discarded by the effect of attack, etc., it went back to your hand to go again. A Pokemon that turned into a stadium card, that was cool and weird. Shout out as well to Gengar Level X. Now, the Level X Gengar was not really the best Gengar we ever had, but it did have a phenomenal compound pain attack that did 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon that already had any damage on it. It went exceptionally well with the Gengar from Stormfront and its Shadow Room attack that put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Six, if they had a poker power, you'd spread damage around with that quite nicely. And, of course, it also did have a, a rather nice ability here, level down, whereby you could make your opponent shuffle one of their level X cards back into their deck. Please remember at this stage that you could only level X a Pokemon when it was in the active. This was actually kind of annoying. And we should give a little bit of a shout out to Glysaur GX. Did see a bit of play here and there as more of a fringe card. When you level X Glysaur, you could choose one of the defending Pokemon. They were paralyzed and poisoned. And for two energy, you could do 60 damage and switch to the bench. Last couple of honorable mentions here were Azalf and Mesprit. Now, I don't want to give the game away too much, but I will tell you that Uxie did make this list. You'll have to find out where by eh, watching along. But these were just other cards that worked really well in a deck with that one. As Alf took away the weakness of all your psychic Pokemon, which to be fair, did see play outside of the Lake Trio decks. And Mesprit for two energy did 200 damage if you had Uxie and Azalf level X in play. So Mesprit was your main attacker in that kind of deck. Those two, they kind of came as a pair, though Azalf did see a bit of play outside of the deck. So coming in at number 10, we've got Machamp. Machamp Level X, like so many of the Level Xs, was really there because Machamp was good. Machamp from Stormfront was a phenomenal card that for one fighting energy did 40 damage, but against a basic Pokemon, and there were lots of basics at the time, instant KO. So Machamp Level X came in, and what it really added here was the Poker Body No Guard. As long as Machamp is your active Pokemon, each of its attacks do 60 more to your opponent's active, and any damage done to Machamp is increased by 60. Now, Strong World was kind of fun because it essentially did 80 damage, and if it would be knocked out next turn, its HP becomes 10 instead, or indeed you could just use something like Hurricane Punch because level X's could use the attacks of the main Pokemon that you level X'd. It was a good card. It was only really played because Machamp was played anyway, and it wasn't in every Machamp deck, but it was kind of cool. And fitting that same kind of pattern, we had Gardevoir level X. Again, this was mainly played because Gardevoir from Secret Wonders was a phenomenal card. The ability locked your opponent out of poker powers, and the poker power let you use a supporter card from your opponent's discard pile. 
which was fun. As for the level X, level X was quite nice. Once during your turn, choose one of your active Pokemon or one of your bench Pokemon and switch Gardevoir with that Pokemon. Let you switch in and out of the active. And for two Psychic Energy, the Pokemon, whoever it was, with the lowest HP remaining, would be knocked out. Couldn't always use it, but sometimes you could, and that was kind of fun. But again, this was really played because Gardevoir itself was good. It made its way into some World Championship decks. But not every Gardevoir list played the level X, although a lot of the better ones did. I am cheating in at number 8. I am putting Palkia G and Palkia level X. Because both the Palkia were fringe cards that were good in very specific decks. So I think it's only fair that we should have a little bit of a look at them together. Starting off with Palkia G level X, it had the Poker Power Lost Cyclone. You may use the power once during your turn, and anybody who has four or more bench Pokemon chooses three of them and puts the other ones into the Lost Zone, not the discard pile, the Lost Zone. Plus, it's kind of expensive, but two water, two colorless energy, discard two energy and do 80 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Expensive? Yes. Good? Yes. It's awesome play in, in a bunch of decks, some SP decks and some decks that were trying to just, just reduce your opponent's bench. But then we also saw Palkia level X that saw a fair bit of play as well. Remember the G were the SP Pokemon. Palkia level X had restructure. Once during your turn, you may have your opponent switch one of your active Pokemon with one of the bench. And then you switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of the bench. This worked beautifully in Flygon decks, and Flygon's going to be coming up shortly. And it was really good, because if you had a free retreater on the bench, or indeed you only had free retreaters, you could basically make your opponent bring something up off the bench, and then retreat it for free. Or you could just get a meddlesome Pokemon out the active, or if you had some kind of switching card, you could force a Pokemon into the active. It was kind of fun. Now, coming in at number seven, the biggest regret I've got in the Pokemon trading card game is that I never played a Regigigas level X deck. To be fair, at the time I was playing Donphan Prime, which destroyed Regigigas, but I still feel a little bit bad about myself because I love Regigigas. So, Regigigas Level X, this was, it was a good deck, but not necessarily the very best deck, although it did see its fair share of success, but it was a deck in and of itself, it wasn't a tech you put into something else, it was its own deck. Regigigas Level X had the Poker Power Sacrifice. Once during your turn, you may choose one of your Pokemon in play, knock it out, and then search your discard pile for two basic energy cards, attach them to Regigigas, and remove eight damage counters. Yeah, that's a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Healing 80 damage back then was huge, and you got the energy on, because your attack here was Giga Blaster, and that was a very expensive attack. 100 damage, discard the top card of your opponent's deck, then choose a random card from your opponent's hand and discard it. That is a very powerful attack would generally be used along with Mesprit, which was ability locking. You played it down and your opponent couldn't use poker powers. And then, of course, you could sacrifice it using the poker power. And the goal was here that even though you're giving up prizes, your opponent never takes out Regigigas. And Level X is still only gave up one prize. And then your opponent just couldn't win the game. And that was kind of hilarious. And it was actually played with a bunch of different Regigigas. It was played with the one from Legends Awakened. But the number one here was actually the Regigigas promo with Dragoff that dragged one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active in a format where switching wasn't huge. In at number six, the aforementioned Flygon Level X. Love me some Flygon. Flygon had the Pokebody Wind Erosion. As long as it's your active Pokemon, 
you discard the top card of your opponent's deck between turns. And between turns means one after your turn, one after their turn, one after your turn, one after their turn. You see where we're going with this, ladies and gentlemen? It was fun. And you could, of course, discard all their cards and you win the game. Or you could just discard a couple of them, but hope to hit the best cards. And then, at that point, there's nothing they can do and you kind of win the game anyway. And it's kind of fun. It was generally evolved from the Flygon from Rising Rivals that had the Pokemon E Rainbow Float. If any basic energy card attached to Flygon is the same type as any of your Pokemon, the retreat cost for those Pokemon is zero. So you remember how earlier I said you could use Palkia with Flygon? And if you only had free retreating Pokemon, your opponent couldn't really strand anything active, but then you could? Yeah, you could. So you would use this to make sure that Palkia, your opponent pulled one of your Pokemon active, you had free retreat, you then pulled one of their Pokemon active, that they couldn't get out the active, and you discarded one card from the top of their deck between turns. And of course, every card you discard is one less option for them to get out the active. Kind of fun. And this deck could be played with literally no energy whatsoever. In at number five... And this is really where we see a bit of a gap. Number five is significantly better than the rest. This is where it starts becoming the real cream of the crop. Dialga G Level X. Remember that Dialga G Level X could only Level X from Dialga G. You didn't have a choice like you would for just Dialga, which could come from any of them. Now, Dialga G was very nice for... Two energy, but we had energy gain back then, so it's kind of one energy. Defen did 10 damage and stopped your opponent playing trainer cards or stadium cards. That's kind of fun. This is when trainer meant item. And then you would level X Dialga. The Pokebody would turn off all your opponent's Pokebodies. And for four energy, you do 80 damage, flipping a coin till you got tails. And for each head, removing an energy from the defending Pokemon, putting it in the loss zone. Would be combined with special metal energy and a high HP on what was essentially a basic to give you some really good tanking options. And let's not forget that Garchomp C level X, more on him later, did completely heal your SP Pokemon when it came into play. So yeah, you could keep this around for quite a while. It was a phenomenal card. In at number four, though I'm not entirely sure about this one, I wouldn't be upset if you wanted to put it higher. Mewtwo Level X. Mewtwo Level X had the Pokebody Psy Barrier prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to Mewtwo by your opponent's Pokemon that isn't an evolved Pokemon. Well, spoiler alert, the other three Pokemon on this list are all basic Pokemon. SP Pokemon like Dialga were everywhere. All SP Pokemon were basics. Regigigas was a basic. There were a lot of basics around. If you didn't play a counter for this in your SP decks, you lost the second this Mewtwo level X came out. Because you couldn't attack it. It forced every SP player to put a Mewtwo level X counter into their deck, or they lost. Now, in terms of the attack, it was all right. Free energy, 120, and then you had to discard all the energy, which sounds really annoying, but we did have the energy absorption Mewtwo from Majestic Dawn for zero energy. Search your discard path for up to two energy cards and attach them to Mewtwo. So that meant you could do 120 every other turn while blocking all basics. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. In at number three, Luxray Level X. Luxray Level X was a phenomenal Pokemon. Now, Luxray GL was fine. It was all right. It was okay. You had the usual tricks like energy gain to lower the attack cost. But it was really Luxray GL Level X's bright look that put it over the top. This was a format with very little gusting, pulling Pokemon off the bench. And when you Level X'd it, you got to pull one of your opponent's Pokemon off the bench into the active. You then had free retreat, so you could just retreat. 
or you could attack with Luxray. 60 damage for essentially one energy was quite nice. It acted as a really nice Gyarados counter, and Gyarados was everywhere at the time. It was a very widely played deck. And, of course, it won the World Championships with Beedrill because, well, Beedrill wanted Gusting. It was literally played in the World Championship winning Beedrill deck just for the Gusting. In at number two, Luxray's favorite partner, Garchomp C Level X. A Pokemon so good it literally just led to the Garchomp Wars. Which was essentially that all of these SP decks would just trade back and forth with Garchomp. And they'd all have to play Ambipom G or Dragonite purely, Dragonite FB, to have an answer to this or, or else they'd lose. It was ridiculous. It was such a good card. Several things about it were good. I mean, really, this was all right until we got the double colorless energy reprint in Heart Gold Soul Silver, which really put it over the top. Now, using energy gain, you could use Dragon Rush for one energy. You discarded two energy, the double colorless, and did 80 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It changed the game. Up until then, it was actually Blaziken FB level X which was the big attacker, but Garchomp came and just completely took over. And, of course, it had a Pokebody Healing Breath that completely healed all of your SP Pokemon when it came into play. It was a little bit ridiculous. But it still wasn't the best level X. The best level X was Uxie. And I feel strongly about this, even though I think some people might disagree. My friend had a Uxie, and I borrowed it off her until it rotated. Ah, she's cool. She's a good friend. Yuxi, of course, was absolutely everywhere. You played it to the bench and drew till you had seven cards in your hand. But what you tried to do was get Yuxi into the active to level exit. And then you gained an attack, or a poker power at least. Whereby you could look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one in your hand and the other one on the bottom card of your deck. Firstly, brilliant consistency boost. Secondly, it meant that that Uxie that was on your bench now serves another purpose. Plus, Zenblade was actually a suspiciously good attack for taking out opposing matchamps. And there we go. They were the top 10 level Xs. I feel pretty good about the top 10 list as a whole. Honestly, from kind of 6 down to 10, I wouldn't be upset if you mixed them around. But I do think 1 to 5 should be set. And I do think number 1 Yuxi is number 1. And I do think it is by a little bit of a margin. But I would love to know what you think. I'd love to know your memories about level Xs. Which was your favourite? Which ones did you play? Go nuts in the comment section, but please be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.